These are the answers to the um, Unit 6 and 7 portion of the practice test. And we'll do separate ones for uh, 8 and 9 and 10 and 11. So first off, it says, when you see this kind of a problem, 1, 2, 3, that means there's three separate little problems. So think of it each individually and then go down and answer the question. So when water freezes at 0 degrees, which of the following is true? Water freezes. So we have to think H2O. What are we thinking? Freezing. That means that that is a liquid and then it's changing into H2O as a solid. Okay, we say, well, which side is energy on? Remember that uh, heat always goes on the more solid side, so heat is over here. So the process is endothermic. No, heat's on the right, so it is exothermic, so that's not true. Molecular attractions are strengthened. Okay, liquid turning into a solid. Solid has to be held together better, so yeah, this is true, B is true. And the value of Q is positive. Okay, well, if heat is on the right side and given off, okay, that means that uh, Q, okay, must be released and released Q, that's a negative. Negative is a, so this is not true either. So it's two only, answer A. Okay, let's go to number two. Which of the following is true for an endothermic process? So endothermic process, okay, that's like X going into Y, Endothermic means heat's on this side. So A plus heat turns into B. Yes, that's true. And okay, I guess that's our answer. So B, heat is released. No, heat is released as XO. The energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants. Okay, so remember for uh, endothermic reaction, that's uphill. Okay, so the energy of the, uh, these are the products and these are the reactants. Okay, so the energy of the products is lower. No, that's not true. And the value of C sub P is positive. Okay, uh, C sub P, that is how much energy it takes to change, you know, one gram of a, a substance like water is 4.184 joules per gram degree. That's always going to be uh, positive. So that's not true for exo or endo. It's just always the same. So answer is A. Number three, which of the following processes is heat in in which of the following is heat absorbed? So we're saying in which case is heat going to be on the left side? Okay, so dissolving calcium chloride in water gets hot. If it gets hot, that means it's releasing energy. That's not the answer. Combustion. Every time you burn something, that definitely releases heat. Okay. Vaporizing of methyl alcohol in a hand boiler. Okay, so if you have um, liquid changing into a gas... Okay, well, we know that heat always goes on the more solid side, the liquid side. So, yeah, that's the answer. Okay, vaporizing is going to require energy. And cooling helium in the freezer. Okay, again, if you have something in a freezer, then it's going to release energy to the freezer itself. So the gas is going to lose energy. So, you know, that's releasing energy again. So C is the only good answer. How much heat is required to heat 100 grams of water from 20 to 50 and the C sub P is one calorie per gram degree. Okay, we're using funny units here. Instead of joules, we're using calories, but the same problem. Okay, we are heating up water. When you're heating up water, then we know Q equals M delta T C sub P. Okay, those three things. So we're heating, what, 100 grams of water. Okay, how much? We're going from 20 to 50. Okay, so that's 30 degrees. Okay, because it's final minus initial, 50 minus 20. And the C sub P is 1 calorie per gram degree. So it's 100 times 30 times 1, and that's 3,000 calories. Number 5. As a block of aluminum is heated from 600, with 600 joules of energy, its temperature increases from 10 to 47, what's the mass of this block? And C sub P equals that. Again, if we're just heating something up, then our equation is Q equals M delta T C sub P. Okay, those three things. So we have four variables, and we're saying this time that uh, 600 joules, that's our energy, is heating up M mass times the change in temperature from 10 to 47, so that's 37 degrees, times 0.9 uh, joules per gram degree. So we are looking for that little m right there, so now it's a math problem. So m 
is equal to 600 divided by 37 divided by 0.9. Now again, the joules drop out, the degrees drop out, so we're left with grams. And the answer is 600 divided by 37 divided by 0.9, and I get 18 is my answer. So answer C. Okay, the six. The units for heat. Heat is joules, right over there. You can see that. So that's just joules. Okay, number seven. Twenty gram sample of each of the following metals are originally at ten. They're heated evenly for ten minutes. Which metal will have the highest temperature at the end? So remember this C sub P. What that tells you is how much something resists change in temperature. How much it resists change in temperature. So you got equal amounts, and they're heated evenly for ten minutes. So which one is going to resist? Which one has the highest temperature at the end? The one that resists the least. So that's going to be the gold. Okay, that's the one with the smallest C sub P that resists change the most. Okay, number eight. Um, 5,000 joules of heat is applied to 50 gram samples of three liquids at their boiling points. Which substance will have the most liquid remaining? Okay, so now we're talking about uh, changing phase. The heat of vaporization is how much the chemical resists change in phase. So we want the most liquid remaining. We want the one that resists change in phase the most, so you have the most liquid remaining. So who's going to resist the most? This guy here with the 2,000. So water would be the one with the most remaining. Okay, moving on to number nine. When water vapor undergoes condensation, so we're talking about water, that is a gas turning into water that's a liquid. Now remember too, the heat would be on the more solid sides over there. Okay, when water undergoes, which of the following does not change? Okay, the temperature of the sample. Okay, this is a phase change, and during a phase change, the temperature does not change. Which does not change? The temperature does not change. And that's the answer. The molecular attractions, yes, they would get stronger. The state of matter, of course, gas to liquid. And all of these change? No, that's not the answer either. So it has to be answer A. Temperature stays the same. Remember we're doing um, this kind of thing. We're going there, there, there. Okay, so while it phase changes, there's no temperature change. Okay, number 10. Okay, here's some numbers here. And remember, way at the back of the prob of the uh, test, or somewhere on the test, there is our uh, equations given there. So, you know, like the Q equals MC delta T. That's where that was coming from. Okay, a large ice cube is placed in a cup of water at zero degrees. After a few minutes, some of the ice remains. Which of the following equation correctly describes the melting of the ice? Okay, melting ice. So we're talking about water. And melting means it's a solid changing into water that's a liquid. So we're looking for that. And remember, the heat goes on the side, the more solid side. So heat's over here. So we're looking for heat. And what liquid, I mean heat and solid turn into liquid. Heat and solid, so heat's on the wrong side, heat's on the wrong side. Okay, solid going to liquid, here it is, answer C. So we're just looking for the right answer. Okay, which of the uh, portion of the heating curve is associated with the melting of ice? So remember, this is solid, this is liquid, this is gas. Melting is B, right there, going from uh, the solid to the liquid. What is the final temperature of the water? Okay, so the large ice cube is placed in a cup of water at zero. After a few minutes, some of the ice remains. Okay, so as long as the ice still remains in there, some of it, it's going to stay at zero degrees. So what's the final temperature of the water? It is going to be zero degrees. Alrighty, so that is unit six. Okay, be able to do some of these equations and knowing about the different phase changes and our heating curve. Okay, looking at number seven. Which now it's kinetics and equilibrium. So which just rates and that stuff. Which of the following changes will result in a decreased rate of reaction? <clears throat> so we talked about several ways to increase a rate of reaction. How are we going to decrease? Well, adding a catalyst, no, that would speed it up. Heating up the reactants, no, that would speed it up. Cutting the reactants into smaller pieces, no, that would speed it up. Diluting, right. If we lower the concentration, that would um, decrease the rate of reaction. So 13 is the answer. D is the answer. Photographic film is sometimes kept in the refrigerator. Okay, this is the old-fashioned stuff. Uh, because cold film results in sharper pictures, no. 
Okay, to slow down the chemical reactions on the film, that's what you want to do. You want to cool it down. So it's sort of like the last answer here. What can you do to slow down the rate of the reaction? So, and uh, protect the film, be cold insulates the film. That no, slows down the chemical reaction. Okay, what's the distance to the activation energy? Okay, here's the reactants, here's the products. Okay, this distance here is the delta H. And the activation energy is how much energy it takes to get up to this transition state right here. So this is the answer we want. So that corresponds to B. Okay, activation energy E sub A. That corresponds a little letter B. I kind of made my picture messy, but you can tell. A catalyst is a substance that, okay, we know that catalysts speed up a reaction and don't get used up. That's what we're looking for oxidizes undesired waste products, and I know what that means, changes the rate and doesn't get used up, that's the answer. Okay, lowers the energy of the reactants, no. And increases the kinetic energy, no, that's temperature, speeds things up. So it changes the rate and doesn't get used up. 17, what would cause a change in the kinetic energy here? So we're talking, here's our, here's our graph, here's our graph. Okay, but what's happening is that this little line, okay, our threshold energy, it used to be right here, now it's here. So what would move that back? Okay, that's a catalyst. The catalyst is going to change the threshold energy. Okay, so answer C. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Uh, what is the delta H for the reaction shown on this graph? <clears throat> okay, delta H is from here to here, the difference in these products. The fact that it's downhill means it's going to be negative, and it's by 5. So the answer is negative 5 kilojoules per mole. Now why is it negative? Because it's defined as final minus initial. Okay, so 5 minus 10 okay, is going to equal negative 5. So that's why negatives are always downhill, kind of changes like that. Okay, 19 and 20 refer to the following kinetic energy. Lines A and B okay, represent the average kinetic energy and the threshold energy respectively. Okay, so here's our curve and the average energy right here, so that's like our temperature, okay, and then our uh, little guy here, that's the threshold energy, we know after that, those are the particles that can, escape, that can uh, react. Okay, back to the question, if the temperature of the system is increased, how will the graph change? Well, if we increase the temperature, okay, that's going to shift the sky over like that, and now our temperatures, or our average would be higher, so uh, a will increase while B remains the same. That's the answer. Okay, because the threshold energy stays the same. Uh, Twenty. If B decreased while while A increases, okay. So if B moved this way, okay, and A increased, so like my blue line here, then all these particles would be able to react. So I'd have a lot more particles able to react. So if B decreases while A increases, which of the following may have happened? Okay, well, if A is increasing, okay, that means that the temperature is going up. And if B decreases, that means we got a, a catalyst. We added a catalyst. So we're looking for adding a catalyst and temperature goes up. The reaction mixture was heated. That sounds good. The catalyst was added. That sounds good. Surface area was increased. No, that doesn't have anything to do with it. So it's one and two only. Uh, answer C. Okay, 21. We are moving into equilibrium ideas. So what's the expression for the equilibrium constant? Okay, remember this is products over reactants raised to the power of their coefficients, but we do not include solids because solids cannot change their concentration. So we're going to have the K is equal to the concentration of HI squared over the concentration of H2. So we're looking for an answer that looks like that. And if we see I in there, we know that can't be the answer. It can't be the answer. It has to be one of these two. So HI squared over H2, that's answer D. Okay, 22 through 26, okay, these all have to do uh, with this expression. Okay, and the value for the KEQ is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9. That's pretty small, so that means this is uh, pretty much a, a reactant favored. You know, that we can have, when it reaches equilibrium, we have lots of reactants. Okay, which of the following may indicate that equilibrium has been reached? 
Okay, how do we know when equilibrium has been reached? When we have constant macroscopic properties. Okay, so when these concentrations are all equal to each other, no. Remember we said equilibrium is not when everything is equal. Equal moles of H plus and SO2 minus have been added. No, because that could, you know, that doesn't mean it's equilibrium. The pH remains constant. Okay, constant properties is the one we want. So, uh, th uh, answer three, letter B is the only one that's constant properties. Okay, which of the following is the correct expression for the equilibrium constant? Okay, products of a reactants. So, the KEQ is equal to H plus concentration squared times SO3 to minus concentration to the first power over H2SO3 and that is just to the first power. That's what we're looking for. Everybody's aqueous, so everybody's part of the equation. Heat does not show up. So what is our answer here? KEQ, we're looking for H plus squared on top. Okay, so that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. So it has to be answer C. And looking at it closely, yes, that's the right answer. Okay, 24. In an equilibrium mixture, okay, concentration given concentration, what is the H plus of the mixture? Okay, now this is the math problem. They told us here that the KEQ value is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9. That's this guy. So 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9 is equal to, okay, we're looking for the H plus, so that's X squared, okay, that's this guy, times the SO2 minus is 1 times 10 to the negative 2. And this is all over... Uh, 0, 0, 1, 5, point 0, 0, 1, 5. So here's our math problem. We just have to solve for x squared. So we'll just do it again. So x squared is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9. Okay, uh, times, I'm going to move this over to the top, uh, point 0, 0, 1, 5, and divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to take this now. I don't want x squared, I want x. So it's the square root of that, so it's the square root of that. So it's just a big math problem. So I'll take a minute here to do this. Okay, when I do this on my calculator, I get 0 0.0000106. That would be 1.06 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1.0 times 10 to the minus 5 doesn't look like any of my answers. So I'm going to go back and try this again. Okay, I recalculated this and I didn't get this answer. Okay, I got a different answer. Uh, I got 0. 0.0000015, okay, which is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, good. And that's answer A. Phew! Okay, so it's just a big math problem. So the, again, here's what our expression is. They're telling us this one, they're telling us this one, they're telling us this one, and we've got to find this guy squared. So make that x squared. And then it's just a math problem. Okay, 25. To a mixture already at equilibrium, which of the following would have a greater concentration if H2SO3 were added? Okay, well, we have to go back and get our equation. So it's uh, this guy here. So this is a uh, heat plus H2SO3 equilibrium with two H pluses and SO3, two minus, and everybody's aqueous. Okay, so to a mixture at equilibrium, which of the following would have a greater concentration if HSO3 were added. So if I added some HSO3, then what's going to happen, this reaction is going to shift to the right. So this is going to be up, this is going to be up, and this, okay, is going to be up because we added it. So the HSO3, that would be up, the H plus would be up, the SO3 too, so everybody's going to be up, one, two, and three. And which of the following would conditions would produce the highest HSO3 concentration? So if I want a lot of this, then I'm going to have to shift to the left. So what's going to shift to the left? Okay, pH of 2 or pH of 9. Now remember pH, okay, is the H plus concentration. So if I want to shift to the left, I want a lot of H plus. 
Okay, I want that to be up. So high pH, high H plus concentration is low pH. We have to remember acids and bases. So we want one of these two low pHs. Okay, heat's over here. So if we added heat, it would shift to the right. So we're going to remove heat. We want it to shift to the left. So we're going to want low temperature. So here's 10 and 40. We want the 10 degrees. So the best one here is answer A, 26A. Okay, 27. Which expression represents the equilibrium constant for this guy? Okay, it's gas, gas, and gas, so everybody's good. Okay, we want to have NO2 okay, squared divided by NO on the bottom, and that'll be squared because it's 2. Okay, and then O2 to the first power. Now remember, everybody is times, not added, and that's our KEQ expression. So we're looking for NO2 on top, so let's knock that one off. That one looks good, and knock that one off, and that one's not squared. Okay, so it has to be B, and that's our answer. Okay, 28. This reaction takes place in solution. Okay, A turns into 2B. At equilibrium, these are our concentrations. What's the value of the equilibrium constant? Okay, so when we see that expression, then we're going to write our equilibrium constant, and we're going to assume that everybody is the solution. And so that's going to be B on top, since it's 2B, it's squared, over a concentration of A on the bottom. And now we're going to just plug in some numbers. So A is 0.1, and B is also 0.1, but it's squared. So now it's a math problem, 0.1 squared over 0.1. Okay, well, one of those point ones is going to cancel out, so it's just going to be point 0.1. So if you do point 0.1 times point 0.1 divided by point 0.1, you get point 0.1, and that's answer A. Okay, this is the last one in this section. In this equation, here's the equation. Increasing the pressure of the total system causes the equilibrium to shift to produce what? Okay, so first off, if we were to <coughs> increase the pressure on the total system. So how do we do that? We got to squeeze it down. So we're going to make it into a smaller container. So if we increase the pressure, what's going to happen? It's going to shift to the side with fewer moles of gas. Fewer moles of gas. So here we have one, two, three, four moles of gas. Here's two moles of gas. So if we do this, it's going to shift this reaction to the right. So now which answer kind of goes along with shifting to the right? We get more NH3 gas. Yeah, that's the answer. Okay, more N2 gas only, no, it's going to have less of that. More N2 and H2, no, less and no change, no. Okay, so it's a gaseous system. If we squeeze on it, increase the pressure, decrease the volume, it's going to shift to the side with fewer moles of gas because there's not enough room, and that's answer A. That is the first section of this uh, practice final.